Hello, everyone. It's Sunday once again. It's now 2 o'clock in the UK and 9 p.m. in Manila, where uh, my guest is actually live from. Um, but this is no ordinary Sunday because um, we've actually done a full circle. Um, 1st of August 2021 is the first time I've actually live streamed um, on Astro Drama. So now the 31st of July, we've done so like one year. I couldn't believe it. It's like Astro Drama is one year old. So <laughs> I'm so happy about it. I was like unbelievable. I didn't think I could do it, but we, we're here. We're still here. So um, yeah. So, oh my God, for our special um, one year anniversary episode, uh, I am so excited to be chatting to um, a legend of the Philippine new wave music scene. Um, so he's going to be coming to you live from Manila. And um, so we're going to bring him in now. Um, please welcome, um, well, my dear friends, um, please welcome Gregorio Reyes, better known as Boying Reyes of Kumela Band. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Anna. Yes, it's a yes, it's a pleasure and like what an honor to be to be on your show. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you, thank you so much. It's yeah. like I said, I mean, it's our one year um, mm -hmm. anniversary, and I thought it would be nice to sort of, like go back to my roots, you know, because um, I mean, everybody knows that I'm you know originally from the Philippines, so it's it's nice to actually have someone, a drummer um who's from the philippines a philippine drama from a philippine band so i'm really glad that you said yes to guesting on ask the drama mm -hmm. um thank you so much um so how are you boying <laughs> well, um yes generally uh, i'm in, in good shape at the age of 64 still in good shape <laughs> wow 64 <laughs> 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 That's a great age, sixty-four. So, um, um, I've recently saw like uh, seen on the news that um, former President Fidel Ramos is uh, like um, left the you know, left the planet. So, I'm really sorry to hear that about uh, you know like Philippines. And so, rest in peace, yeah, Mr. Fidel yes. Ramos. So, yeah. So, um, what's the weather like? In the well, Philippines. it's been raining uh, cats and dogs here nearly the whole day. It's uh, raining now. <laughs> it's, it's raining really hard. That's what the Americans call it, raining cats and dogs. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's really, yeah, it's, it's just about, about around 6 p.m. and it, it stopped raining. We've had a bit of um, a heat wave here in the UK recently, and it's so sort of like almost like oh, back yeah. in. Manila. It's, summer, it's summertime there. Yeah, right. yeah. But um, it's cooled down a bit now, so it's not as hot as a few days ago. But mm -hmm. anyways, um, fresh from sneak attack. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna be asking you about sneak attack later on. But um, are you still on cloud nine? I mean, how are you feeling now that it's been well, so um, based on the feedback yes i it was, it was nice it was overwhelming to begin with because but uh, audience wise sad thing is we were asked to play first when the audience is, uh, is coming in the venue yeah so it's not, not, that's not, not much uh, not, not too many people when we started playing but most important thing is uh, the producers are there the bosses are there and they saw, and I, I was, I, you know, Jesse, you know, Jesse? Yeah, yes, of course. Yes, I, I, I received a very like heartwarming message from him, like, uh, congratulated the band, thank the band, me. And then he said that you, you did great. That was one of the most dynamic, magnificent set that I've ever seen. That's what he said. Yeah, I saw yeah, it before. Uh, yeah, too it, bad it, we played no, first. Uh, like, uh, we, we should have been. Uh, put in like in the in the uh, prime, yeah. Prime yeah. Set. But anyway, uh, Jesse has his, uh, you know. So anyway, as professionals, we do as we are told. You know, yeah. The show directors, if we say if they say we play first. Of course, we're gonna play first. And you enjoyed yourselves. And of course, I enjoyed every bit. 
every bit. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, before I actually go, well, like I said, I'm going to ask you about sneak attack later on as well. Mm -hmm. But before anything else, uh, I just want to say massive thank you to Alvin Santiago of the Muted Calls. I mean, they also yes. played at sneak attack. I mean, Thank you so much, Alvin, for the link up. Because if it wasn't for Alvin, I wouldn't talk like I oh, yes. found out about I, actually, you. Actually, uh, just so you know, I'm wearing a Muted Squalls t-shirt here. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me just, uh, let me just go. yeah, that's a Muted Squalls t-shirt. So oh, that's, right. that's brilliant. That is so good. And yes, also, yes. I want to say hello to Alan Braun Ramirez. He said, wow, Sir Boying. And also Monty, Monty Mendigoria. Thank you so much for joining us live. So I'm really glad that you know they're they're able to sort of like watch us today. So um right, boying. <laughs> Welcome to Ask the Drummer. Um yes, episode yes. 48 is all about you, boying Reyes. So we're gonna start from the very beginning. Um you're born and bred in Manila. Yes. But I, I grew up in the South. I grew up in Mindanao. That's oh. uh, where I finished my studies from grade school, high school, and then college. That's where I graduated college in Mindanao. Okay. Um, but oh, so maybe I should ask you, what was it like when you were growing up in Mindanao? I mean, whereabouts whereabouts in Mindanao? Oh, in, in Davao, you know, President Davao. Duterte's uh, hometown, yes. Right. So what was it like when you were, what was Davo like when you were growing up? Especially the well, music, uh, like the music oh, scene? Oh, I, I didn't pay attention much to the music scene because I have my own music scene at home. I was, uh, I was a musician at a very young age. I started playing drums when I was seven. And my, my family is a family of musicians. And we have all this uh, complete set of instruments where we can play anytime we want. And uh, of course, and then uh, when I graduated my grade school, high school, I started playing in pubs. I was already a professional musician at the age of 13, playing drums in, in nightclubs. Wow. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, so when yeah, eventually when my dad was reassigned back to Manila, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't get, I didn't have a hard time uh, like sinking in the music scene because uh, I'm well prepared. So at a yeah. very young age, I already joined this, uh, you know, this this big uh, big names, in, yeah, especially yeah. in the Pinoy you know, rock scene. I jammed yeah. with them, you know, I played with them at a very but, young age. Mm -hmm. Um, what what so like got you into drumming? Who made the decision that you're going to be playing the drums? Was it you or was it your dad or? No, it's actually me. Okay, so um, I have a brother, I think he was the second to the eldest, and he was a drummer, and he belonged to a band, a really uh, known band in Manila at that time. Mm -hmm. So, and he has, my, my dad actually was encouraging when it comes to us being musically inclined. So he, he even bought that set of instruments for us. Wow. So I started learning drums on, at the age of seven. And then... Right. Yeah. yeah. And did you so like have lessons or was you, did you just so like at first no that's why when my brother went away he went to stints abroad japan europe and uh, when he came back he said oh how are you how's your drumming so let's see so i played drums so immediately he said no 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 you're going you're gonna have to go back to basics so he taught me i went back to zero then after playing for almost six years i went back to zero so, so he, you were already uh, playing. You were playing professionally, and then your brother came over, and then your brother yes. said, "No, you've got to start again from yeah, yeah. You know, the very basic." So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I learned proper drumming. At oh, okay. the age of maybe uh, I was around fifteen at that time, fifteen, sixteen, somewhere around that. So, um, what year was it? So, like. The seventies when you were in Davao. Yes, that, yeah, that was the time that uh, the seventies, the eighties rock. You know, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, and you know Alice Cooper, stuff like that. And the yeah, yeah. So I I managed to get to play all those uh, 
yeah, and covers. So those were two that's, years. That's brilliant that um, in Davao uh, at that time, you were actually doing like, you know, like classic rock or maybe heavy, heavy rock, like the yes, said. And so um, I went to Manila, but then after, after a few years, I went back to my hometown. And yeah. there was a, there was a rock band there, but they're they're more of a half-ass rock band. So I said, okay, let's start over again. So we, after that, maybe within that same year, we became the most rocking rock band in Davao. Up to now, my my members are really they are old, but they're like me. They're legends in Davao, rock legends. Yeah. Up to now. What was the name? What was the name of the band? It's called Sticky Stones. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can look it up. I think I think it's yeah, it's also in, in YouTube, I think. Okay. Is it got so like something to do with the Rolling Stones when you saw like uh, no no <laughs> <laughs> I think one of our lead vocalists was the one who came up with that uh, name, <laughs> Sticky Stones. Yeah. Um well before we continue, just want to say hello to Doc Jiggs. He's changed his name, Doc Jiggs, but anyways, yeah, oh, yes. yeah another drummer. Um I owe Doc Jiggs an apology actually because oh. uh, he, he, at Snake Attack he asked me to uh, autograph his snare drums but I forgot to so oh actually it, it was it was really overwhelming uh, that like flattering coming yeah. from a fellow musician because of course during the early days of my new web scene yeah so a lot of audience like approached me to sign autographs the tickets is that anything but it's the first time my co-musician especially that we are performing on the same show approached yeah. me to sign my autograph in one of his instruments so that is very flattering and <laughs> yeah first of a kind of feeling in my entire career so doc jigs i'm gonna make sure this sunday i will sign your snare drum right. oh that's just brilliant well there you go doc jigs so um yeah so come back um so in the 70s because um that was like when I was in sort of like elementary school and really young and at the time I mean I wasn't really into so like um like the bands that you mentioned like Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin and stuff because of course I used to listen to my mum's music but apart from that um OPM or Pinoy Rock that was like the thing in those days when I was a kid We've had so like Sampagita, my Canopel, hot dog. Yes, and... uh, Sampagita is actually a friend of mine, a personal friend. Because wow. we are we are into the same like what we call it a like, spiritual practice. Uh, so we are we are vegetarians then. So um, right. Yeah, I know I know her personally. I know yeah. her well, and her husband. Uh, Neil Santos, I know him well as well. Yeah, um, because uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm so like my my music scene at the time is different from it, but it's so like um, as um, a teenager, I find it's so like different. The the way that it was different from when I was a kid is like everybody seemed to be listening to. Pinoy rock at the time, which is even the old people or the older generation and the mm -hmm. young people, they didn't mind. But when yeah, the late seventies, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. But when so like you know when the eighties came, <laughs> so like and I was in high school and we seemed to so like had this what we call new wave and things, and mm -hmm. we saw like the young people, so like moved away from the Pinoy rock scene and the. The OPM and stuff. Do you think it's like it's the same with you? Is it like that as well? Or well, um, it's it's more of a, like it's it's natural for me. It's like it's kind of built in. You know, there's no. It's not. Oh, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, the Pinoy rap is uh, yeah. in the blood. <laughs> In in my <laughs> blood, yes. <laughs> You're being a musician, being a yes. musician. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, when you moved, when you moved back to Manila, uh, after so like having a band in Davao, what was mm -hmm. the first band that you joined? Or um, this, Actually, this was uh, the 
activities? Mm-hmm. After sabi, that, uh, my, my band in Davao. Actually, I went to Manila uh, in the late 70s where I joined uh, this uh, folk group, Banyuhai, Heber, Baldur, Bartolome. I was yeah. the drummer for the year. Yeah, so, but yeah. that, that was uh, that was so just for a short time, and then I was uh, ramped by a band called Balahibo. That's a heavy rock band. I, uh-huh. I was I, I was nineteen at that time, and we've been playing. Yes, we've been, we've been playing side by side with Juan de la Cruz, you know, the big names in Pinoy rock. At the age of nineteen, I was already playing side by side on the same stage with them. Yeah, we'll talk about Banyuay Nheba because I remember so like hearing you mention it when you were on uh, Monty's. It's all about New mm-hmm. Wave. So mm-hmm. um, I looked it up on Google. I didn't realize that he actually, you know, he died last year. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, also I found out that Banyu, <laughs> I didn't know this, but Banyu, uh was actually a protest band. Correct, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yes. I mean, I remember um, Tayo Yung Mga Pinoy. I know that song. Yes. Tayo uh, uh, Mga Pinoy, Tayo yes. Hindi Kano. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, and also, um, Banyuay is like, it also means like Bagong Anyong Buhay, which is like a transformation or metamorphosis. Yes, Bagong Anyong Buhay, in short. In one word, correct. Yeah. So, how long were you? How long did you play? Um, uh, just, a, just a few months. Just a few months. Uh, the last time I played with them was uh, it's actually a big concert. It's a, it, 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 uh, it was a, in the big dome, you know, big dome, Araneta. Araneta, yeah, yeah, Araneta. Yeah, that, that was my first and last concert with Panyuma. That oh. was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, late nineteen seventy eight. Wow. So it's produced by Dyna Records, this recording company. Like yeah. all, all the artists like Claire De La Fuente and this stuff. Like I think also I'm not sure we as the company it was but all Dyna talents are stuck is in that concert. Or the yeah. band is the heavy rock group from Alongapo and Banyuay. That was the first and last show I played drums for Banyuay. And you were 19 years old at the time? Yes, or? I was 19 years old at the time. God, that must be incredible. It's an incredible sort of like feeling playing with all these sort of like you know, big names in Pinoy rock. Yes, actually there was a pub in, in, in Malate, in Manila. There were uh, all the uh, big names like Matthew Smith, Gary Perez, or, or um, like Petrified Ant Members, everything. All these guys are... I jammed with all those guys during that time because I was I was a hang around boy in that pub, and all these rock stars used to hang around there and jam. Yeah. So I managed, I managed to jam with Pepe Smith. I managed to jam with Petrified Anthem, and I think Gary Perez at one time I was able to jam with him as well. But with oh. Pepe, I think I jammed with him more than once, as far as I can remember. And Mike Mike Canopo. Oh, at that time, because I think uh, there was a there was a faction between the Juan de la Cruz guys at that time. Pepe has his own band, Pepe and the Airwaves, and then I think Mike Hanapol uh, retained the name Juan de la Cruz, but got a different drummer. So, oh, I see. God, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. And they, they, they were they were writing songs through music. They were like buying each other through their lyrics. Mike Hanapol and Pepe. <laughs> And I yeah, that that song Jeff Ross, I think Mike Hannibal wrote that for Pepe. He was really? uh, he was describing Pepe in that song, Jeff Ross. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> what, 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 what I like with Pepe, he's just quiet. He, he does not he's not he does not retaliate, never. All yeah. the times because I, I we used to hang around Malate after the set. We go to Shakey's in Malate. We used to hang around there maybe until the sunrise. We just stayed there drinking. Yeah, wow. Pepe and the, the other bands. I, I was 19 at that time. Oh, wow. 
it's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, Aiden O'Rourke, Aiden is actually my um, support tech. Um, mm -hmm. So he said that sound and vision good, which is really good. If we, if he always says that, then that's fine. And Aiden I love Aiden He said that against nuclear weapons, Ilanza theme ng kanta ng banyu banyu So it's against nuclear weapons. So yeah, they're a protest band. So um, thank you for joining us, Aiden Um So after um, but you ain't have her, and then Balahibo, you said. So, um, mm. how long were you in this? So, like, I mean, you've got so, like, excuse me, because uh, I've not heard of Balahibo band before. Actually, Balahibo was, uh, there was a, a local version of Jesus Christ Superstar. That It's a rap opera that was uh, done in the cultural center in the Philippines. And the one who played Jesus Christ was Boy Camera. Boy Camera. And yeah. Balahibo Band was the backup band of the rap opera at the oh, cultural wow. center of the Philippines, yes. That's very interesting. So how long How long did this band last? Well, I, they've been going on when I joined them. Like uh, They were like also legends already in the industry when I joined them. They were pretty old. Like, yeah. uh, for example, the owner, uh, Ray, uh, he was, I think, uh, in his, in his late 30s when I joined them and I was 19 at that time so right. oh wow because yeah. um I mean I remember this so like when I was a kid that I mean mm -hmm. I used to just listen to AM radio I didn't even realize that there's an FM radio when I was a kid <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you must have listened to RJ a lot yeah. RJ, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so I mean I I, I'm, I'm sort of like really into Pinoy rock and uh, original uh, Filipino music. But, um, but anyway, so um, did you have any other bands uh, after Balahibo? Or did yes, you after Balahibo, that was the time when I went back to Davao. That was where we formed the Sticky Stones. And then after uh, the Sticky Stones, I joined another band. Um, the face is, I, I, I don't know if you've heard of her. It's, it's, her name is Cynthia Alexander. No, no, I'm sorry. What about what about her brother, Joey Ayala? Have you heard of him? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, jo oh, yeah, Joey yeah. Ayala's sister. Actually, we were together for, for a while. That, that oh. girl. Mm -hmm. I was the one who introduced her into Manila music scene, where he, she became really known. I was, oh, the one who brought, I was the one who brought her here, right, to Manila. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was good. And after that, we've been playing, because that was the time of the, that was the era of the show bands, you know, show bands playing in five-star hotels at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were, we were one of those in that yeah. era. Until I met this guy, his name is Edwin Saulo, the owner of, actually, Comela is before, it was a it, it was a boutique, like the, oh, it, yeah. it, manu it manufactures like backpacks stuff like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's why before he, when uh, he asked me to form a band, it was meant like to uh, like as an endorser of his product. But when the, when the store uh, eventually uh, disappeared, so this Comella is uh, anyway. You can ask me later about what Comella is. <laughs> <laughs> the word itself. I'll, I'll, I'll describe you in briefly what Comela is about. Yeah, because so, so, so I I just I have decided to keep the name because uh, Edwin Saulo really cannot own that name. Yeah, well, it, it's not really so like mm. uh, even though it was a brand because I remember Comela. Um, <laughs> it's just really so like I feel ashamed that I have heard of Comela. But the band, but mm -hmm. I've always known of Camilla in the Philippines as a brand, so like or a shop, because I don't know if it was so like I didn't did they have a shop in Alimo or some something? No, but uh, anyway, in SM, and, SM, uh, Park Square in Makati. Yeah, um, and I if I remember it correctly, I mean they're quite expensive. I mean regular kids like myself couldn't really afford Camilla band, uh, Camilla bags. 
So, <laughs> if, if you are if you are sporting a Camila bag, then you are in. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, you are in. <laughs> 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 so um at the time so there was already a shop called Camilla and they were yes. producing all these backpacks and other stuff so um the owner of Camilla asked you to form a band to sort of like become their marketing vehicle or? not really because we were good friends to begin with right and okay he is he's a follower of my band and when we play in, in hotels so uh, he took interest in maybe I can form a band. But um, he was one of the reasons why I turned New Wave from all this, uh, uh, you know, US top 40s music. So yeah. yeah. The, the first time I saw this New Wave albums was with Edwin. It's like Spanda Ballet, like uh, The Cure. That yeah. was never known in the Philippines during that time. And he, he, has, he has it all in his house. So, and didn't they play? Didn't they play so sort of like new wave music in the shop? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> actually is one of the pillars of the new wave scene in Manila to begin with. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So he asked you to sort of like form a band and call it Camilla. Yes, because um, um, we were invited. I think you heard last time I I was interviewed by Monte. Uh, we uh, we were invite, invited in the William Moore Air Base in the officer's club. And I saw these guys playing New Wave. And these guys are my original members, Randy Allen, my vocalist, Andrew Jeffs. And I said, oh, yeah, I can develop these guys. So I talked to them. So And then Edwin was willing to like to provide all the um, monetary okay. requirements. Yeah, oh, okay. Well. okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I had a free hand in training these guys and putting the band together, of yeah. course, with the, with, the, with the backing of Edwin Saulo. So then we, we phoned Camilla. And then Andrew Jeffs at that time, he was really off. I had to hire someone to train him to develop his voice. But then, of course, that guy is a, is a great bundle of uh, extraordinary talent. He's very talented. So yeah. he managed it. He became Andrew Jeffs of the Mellon. Yeah, so it's true that you're actually the brains of um yes. the, the, I mean, brain and the brain and muscle of the Mellon. And muscle of the Mellon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with the backing of the owner of the, the shop. Yes. So you've got this band now. But uh, you you were saying that it's not really something that they that he could own the name um uh, your band because mm -hmm. it's actually a festival isn't it yes, it's, in a festival. yes. It's, it's, a, it's a gathering of devotees in the river ganges yeah it happens every time and again so that's where we got the uh, the name yeah and uh, if, if you notice the lyrics of my songs they are all related to that because that's how that's that's been our practice for a long time for 20 years or so with edwin we yeah and edwin, so we were very close until of course you, know, you may call it like that but it's not really hinduism it's kind of um a reflection of hinduism but yeah, it's not yeah. hinduism yeah it's exactly uh, it's a uh, i'm not sure if i can disclose it here, <laughs> but uh, it's it? week, uh, yeah it is called Bhakti yoga. All right. It's, it's, it's a process wherein you develop your loving relationship with God. Okay. You're serving and, God. Like yeah. So, and is it like, um, I know that in Buddhism, they have this sort of like uh, thing that you don't have to always go to church and, and all these I things, know. But, you know, uh, but as long as you achieve, so like, Nirvana or peace yes. itself. I, I, I'll give you a brief summary of the difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please All do. Right. Please. All right. Actually, I have. A, I made a song for the the Buddhist, for the impersonalist yogi. It's called Cosmic Journey. 
Right. It's in the album. Yeah. In the album. Um, yes, because that process is what we call the ascending process, wherein you, you through your ep- efforts, you try to attain knowledge or you try to attain Godhead. But, of course, your, your, your own efforts are it's still human. So it's, yeah. it's more, more temporary. Temporary. You may attain the great ocean of white light. Oh, anyway, let me continue. <laughs> <laughs> you, cannot, you can attain the, the ocean of white light, but eventually you will go down. You cannot stay there. But with our process, it's the descending process, not the ascending process. It's knowledge handed down from spiritual masters to disciple to disciple. That is called the disciple accession. So there is no room for, there's no flaw because it came from there itself, the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So that's why my song, Cosmic Journey, the lyric goes that, um, it's actually, um, all right, the song goes, like uh, they, they, uh, they want to attain that ocean of white light. But in some part of that song, I mentioned that I know, I feel that this great white light is coming from someone I know. And that great white light, which in the personalist yogi can attain, is only the effulgence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All right. All gems. That's yeah. the ocean of white light. That's the only way. That's the only one. The, the only place they can attain. But for a devotee, a devotee always say, "I don't want your effulgence. I want to see you." So show me how. That's our process. And you still practice it up to this day. Yes, maybe, <laughs> maybe seventy <70%. laughs> percent. So. <laughs> But the knowledge is here. But that's why I, I am I am reluctant to uh, disclose it because I'm, I might end up saying something wrong. Oh, really? uh, I, 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 I have yes, I have invited some of my spiritual master disciples, you know, the legitimate ones that can discuss this. Yeah. The ones they show. That's why I'm very careful. So I can only right. tell as much as uh, there's a certain limit of what I can disclose. <laughs> I, hope, I hope what I told you is. Uh, <laughs> But we're gonna go back to music then. Yes, of course. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. But um, let me just say that Alan said that it new way lang inabutan niya, so it's it's fine. <laughs> so he mm-hmm. didn't actually the, the Pinoy rock or whatever. And then um, Aroa said, uh, "Nakakasama ko na pala kayo sir boying non sa Malate." Uh, bata pa ako, late 70s, you know, sama ako ng mga auntie ko, nakikita ko na sila Sir Pepe Smith noon. So, that's what AOS said. And um, Alan Braun also said Harrison Plaza. Oh, I remember Harrison Plaza because my dad. Yes. Yeah, because um, cause, uh, I mentioned it to you before we went on live that I was actually born in Santa Ana uh, before we moved to Lago. And we used to go to Horizon Plaza because my dad, <laughs> I think that's where we saw like, and I remember, I remember so like um, Monty mentioned Good Earth. <clears throat> we used to go to Good Earth Emporium <laughs> quite a lot when I was a kid, but I don't know if it's still there. But <laughs> anyways, um, Alan also said that Kapit Bahay Kian Si Alan Dichoso and Randy batang Nichols. Uh, they used, like the band members. Yes. They are from yeah, they are from Nichols actually. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, Alvin uh, Alvin actually saw like join us. Now I know Alvin. I actually said thank you to him earlier um uh, for the link up with uh, with mm-hmm. Boying. So Alvin said great lyrics, chord progressions and my reasons for loving this band. I think Alvin is probably your number one fan. So, and I really <laughs> want to thank him for so like, also, thank you Alvin. Thank you. <laughs> You're making me aware and actually so like having you on the show. Um, so he also said that lalim ng lyrics, uh, kala mo ganun, ganun lang. So, um, yeah, so going back to um, being um, a Camilla band, uh, so how long were you under um, the shop or under that? So, like, um, the product or, um, you know, like, 
whoever the owner was of Camilla. Yeah, maybe, owner? Just a, maybe just a couple of years until, uh, of course, the owner, my friend, I cannot disclose it, but he's got into you know, his own personal issues. And uh, then we ended up being uh, like set aside. Like we were not, not, not really neglected, but uh, he's got his own scene and we were no longer his uh, priority by then. So I've decided, okay, I'll keep this band. Yeah. So yeah. I decided, actually, uh, um, after the recording, uh, that's uh, that's when uh, we kind of like you know, part ways. Yeah. So of but, course, yeah, he's got his, uh, his own personal thing and I have to keep the band going. Yeah, and, but the thing is, uh, for some reason, which I told you earlier, that I had to take a break from the band because I, I went full time with my job somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you. Well, um, Camilla released an album in 1988, uh, "Questions." It's called. It's also the mm. title of your single. It's like, mm. or was it? Was it released as the most famous song? Is "Questions." Right. Um, I was that "Questions" was our carrier single. Yeah. Uh, was it so sort of like released as a natural single or was it just part of the album? It, to begin with, it was part of the album. album. Yeah. But then um, it was later on released as a single. Right. And um, uh, from Discogs, I mean, I don't know if this is so sort of like been released, but it's all, it was only released as a cassette tape. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was only released as a cassette tape. Mm. Are there any plans or so, like, you know, like a lot of bands nowadays, like not just foreign bands, but in the Philippines as well, local bands, they're releasing, re-releasing or reissuing their albums on vinyl and CDs. And are there any plans that maybe questions will be released? Well, on yeah, the, the, plan, the plan has been there all the time, all this time. But the thing is, um, of course, we need someone to produce. We need a sponsor. So we are what you call this, like we are a self-funded group. And most of the time I I shoulder the expenses. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should so sort of like call on Jesse to so sort of like have a <laughs> yeah, but, have but, a if, but if there will be someone who's willing to produce actually as me and alvin discussed earlier i would want to redo the recording like more of a, a digital format for more yeah. mm -hmm. um so well going back now to um sneak attack because mm -hmm. i mean this <laughs> i've never really um been to any like the sneak attack one and two mm -hmm. i mean in fact i wasn't even aware of it which is so like shame <laughs> i was so i feel so ashamed of it but so the first sneak attack was in 1985 86 uh, 86 mm -hmm. but you were uh part of the bill for the the second sneak attack yes is... the first one we, we weren't there yet mm -hmm. so the second sneak attack in atrium Makati. And what year was that? Was 87. 87. So this was before you actually released your album questions. You already sort of like. Um, yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. But me and Dodo, my keyboardist, keyboardist has already been uh, playing tracks. So um, 1987, Sneak Attack 2. What was that like? <laughs> I was so like, uh, I'm really well, interested. I, I, have, I have really like, I have vivid memories of Sneak Attack too. It's, it's wow. It's, uh, it, it's a party of a lifetime during that era, during that period. Yeah. Because yeah. um, everything is there. DJs, like bands, the Dawn, us, Identity Crisis. We are the uh, like, I, I didn't really describe it. We were like the cream of the rap at that time. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, all four bands as well. Of course, there are other bands, but not uh, not like the Dawn, of course, Identity Crisis. They're, they're yeah. more from, like, established. Well, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I remember because I'm still, I still am a big fan of the Dawn and Identity Crisis. I just thought your cool color is so amazing. Mm, <laughs> yes, of course. So mm. I, love, I love that. But um, Camilla, I think it's because of the connection with the shop that it wasn't, it didn't so like register as much. Uh, you said there were like four bands, so, so like main bands at Sneak Attack 2. What was the other one? Um, uh, the Dawn, Identity Crisis, Kumerla, Sick, and oh, Charlotte cool. Roos. Charlotte Roos was the group, uh, the, it's, a, it's an all female group. I think uh, the drummer was the sister of June Boy of the Dawn, so it's oh, somewhat related to, related to the Dawn, but Charlotte Roos, right? Okay, because. I mean, again, the atrium in Makati. I mean, I never went to places like that when I was in Somalia. <laughs> I mean, I blame my auntie for being strict. They wouldn't allow us to so, like, go out outside Lagro or outside Fairview. <laughs> so, so um, Sneak Attack uh, 3, The Return, it must, I mean, you were saying before that they put you on first. I mean, being part of Sneak Attack too, you should sure. have been so like given priorities. So, like, oh no, my no, god, no, 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 I, I, I didn't really mind because uh, for me, of course, being the original, because we were yeah. the only one that were just the remaining original Sneak Attack members. So I just say to the guys, okay, let's play first. Like, let's like to usher the new bands to the scene, yeah, yeah, and to yeah. also uh, introduce them to welcome them to Sneak Attack. Being the original sneak attackers, yeah, so, yeah. yeah we, I, we didn't really mind, but of course it would have been nice if there were a lot of audiences, because uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Even, with a, even with a small crowd, the response is really overwhelming. Yeah, well, I saw I saw the performance actually because you posted it on you, um, but I didn't see it on the actual day. Mm -hmm. I saw it so like the day after. The um, audio is not very good because the, the the one who took the video was too close to the uh, to the speakers. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean the set, um, the set that you did, that's actually amazing. From uh, Billy Idol, Bolshoi, uh, the Cult, the Alarm, and um, of course your own music. Uh, you did questions um, yes. during your set. But the one I was so like really, really I mean I like questions as well, but I was so impressed with Born to be Wild. <laughs> oh yes, all... that, that's one of Kumala's uh, trademark, even before, even during the eighties. Oh, oh so you uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a version by the Hulk of Born to be Wild. But what we did was kind of a mix of the original Stephen Wolf and then the Hulk. Yeah, together, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Our own version, good. actually. Um, the original Sneak Attack, there weren't any foreign um, art, uh, artists back then. It's oh, all, yes. all yeah. like local. What yeah. would you, um, you know, being part of the original and then Sneak Attack, uh, The Return, uh, how would you so like, I don't want to say compare, because I'm sure you love both of them, both of them, but exactly. what was it so like? Yeah, the experiences of being um, um, part of Sneak Attack to the original in 1987, and then again, Sneak Attack 2022. So, well, there yeah. are uh, several like uh, aspects, of course, the technical side, you know, and the, of course, the instrument sound system nowadays are really state of the art, right? Compared to in 1987, we yeah. make do of what the producers can provide of what the, but but nowadays when you go to big concerts like that, the equipment sound system is really state of the art, you know, like digital and programmable, so that's why it sounds really. I don't know what it is how to describe it. It's really sound, you know, like the impact. I'm talking about yeah. the impact yeah. sound. And of course, the venue, uh, Okada Manila is, uh, is uh, so posh. 
I was actually yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I was surprised yeah. that the chairs yeah. actually have like plastic over. Yes. <laughs> is, that, is that because of COVID or is that the way it's always, it's been like, it's, we, That was the second time we played in Okada. First time was with Paul Simpson of the Wild Swans. We yeah. were there. Like that, actually, that was our first show after 35 years of not seeing each other. Oh, I said it's in 2019. And, and, wasn't that? Yeah. and we only did uh, one rehearsal before the actual show. And if I have time, I can send you some footage of that show. It's actually good. Yeah, I'm actually, so, I'm actually so like curious whether the chairs were already had had plastic on them before <laughs> before COVID or. Was it it's, it's it's always been like that. It's I think it's the uh, Okada policy, you know. <laughs> no, I just I just thought, oh my god! I mean, I'm glad that people actually stood up and danced, you know, um, to sort of like the music and stuff, and they didn't just sort of like sit and because these are like new wave songs you were playing, and you know these are sort of like danceable sort of like music. <laughs> So it would have been so like a bit awkward if everybody was just sat down and you know, not doing anything. But anyways, um, so um, Alvin said, uh, yeah, uh, I love this guy, super humble and but it. And I also want to say hello to Reggie Egliani. Uh, good evening, Master Boying Ray, as he said. Um, your yeah, your current um lead. Singer or your current vocalist, um, I found out from it's all about New Wave that he was actually a member of um, Advent Call. Yes, uh, right? yes, correct, correct. Um, a, a friend, my best friend in the Philippines, actually gave me this. I don't know, is it altered natives or alternatives or something? But this is how I got to know Advent Call. <laughs> um, he's really good. I'm yes. really like yeah, I'm really impressed. Yeah. He's of high caliber. He's the kind of front man I, I was looking for in place yeah. of Andrew Jet. So is um his name is all like Roygen? Roygen Lister. Roygen. Roygen Lister. Yeah. So is Roygen gonna be the new vocalist now for Camilla? Well, I, we I, I have not gotten his full commitment yet, but as far as uh, Comella shows are concerned. He said. He said yes. But of course, full commitment meaning everything, recording everything. Yeah. Tools, yeah. You know. But for now, that's the uh, commitment that he gave gave me. You know, like of course, he, he, every time we'll be having a show, he'll 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 do the vocals. When, because you mentioned um, when you did the. Um, Support well, you supported Paul Simpson when he was there. That was in 2019. So that was the first time you actually reformed Camilla after, after so many years. Yes. Um, oh my god, Paul Simpson. I mean, we love Paul Simpson. <laughs> I think every Filipino new waver loves Paul Simpson. So um you only did you said that you only did like one day um rehearsal for that uh who was your vocalist at the time actually we didn't have a vocalist at that time so oh, you oh yeah our friend pearl you know she, she recommended uh, this guy named dot dot seki he's got his own band so we were like kind of uh we were in a time period that time very short time period so i asked him are you willing to do uh, both of for the mama. I said yes. So okay, come over tomorrow. So we did one rehearsal. And that's it. And so he actually did the songs. It, <laughs> yeah, like, yes, and it, it was at a hundred percent. But the impact, the audience impact, because we we took the uh, the prime. We were um, we were the last band before Paul Simpson. So the okay. venue was was already packed at that time. Yeah, so, yeah. So it was a great performance. Actually, we were in the newspaper the next day. Oh and, wow! Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, um, 
there are some uh, like uh, issues with the like for each member like for me as a band leader uh, I, I make sure I do my homework for my members like for example Rujan uh, sent me a message maybe if you can you know, come up with the uh, printout of the lyrics he even mentioned the size of the font <laughs> do it on font 20 so I can read it on the floor <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so I, I did. So when I handed him the uh, the book, the, the lyrics, it's all properly arranged according to the the set. The set, he said, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he said, "Wow." So let's prove that I do my homework as a band leader. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, mm. Well, so, after that uh, gig in twenty nineteen, supporting Paul Simpson, I, I think that was the time. Um, that COVID happened, and then not really because we had several gigs after that. We oh, did you have? In, yeah, yeah. We played, we played in Makati. We played in uh, VF, VF homes. And VF, this, yeah. this was with Dot Saki. Yeah, Dot Saki. Yeah, yeah. Dot Saki actually. Dot Saki has around like four or five gigs with Kumela before oh, nice. before I. I eventually uh, replaced him. Yeah, yeah. But did you sort of like, um, I mean, what I'm, go what I'm going to ask you now that you've got Roy Jen as your vocalist, um, what's next uh, as far as sort of like the band? Because you're the only original member of the band left now, aren't you? No, Alan and me are the original members. Oh, Alan is, was he at the... Uh, so uh, was Alan at the uh, sneak attack? Yes, was he was he the original. Yeah, he was the, my original member during okay. the 80s. Uh, so what's next? Are you going to be sort of like doing more gigs or will you be? Yes, actually, uh, we, we've been uh, kind of discussing with Monty and Alvin, like to do small gigs just, to, just for augmentation purposes. You know, like uh, so, we we won't be stuck in you know in limbo until Jessica Gonzalez come up with something. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we are we are planning. Actually, there there is one project. Maybe it, it will happen either the uh, early September or late September. That's what that's what, what, what the plan is with Monty, and of course, yeah. with all due respect to Jesse. Uh, I, I know that he will understand. These are just small gigs, just to keep the band going mm -hmm. while waiting for the big one. Yeah, Probably. yeah. You know, well, uh, but well, yes, yeah, there will be a lot of gigs, small gigs. Uh, because Jesse, I think uh, we have a group chat. He mentioned something about sometime November. There would be right. a, a big event. So while waiting for that November, so in between we have we will do small gigs. Yeah, because it must be so, like, especially after the successful event last mm -hmm. Friday, the adrenaline. I mean, you don't want to just sort of, like, sit down and not do anything yes, else. Yes, exactly. No, you, you've got yeah. to sort of, like, keep the momentum. and yes, you know? yes. Keep the so, momentum is the exact word. Yes, keep yeah. the momentum. Yes, correct. Yeah, but what's, um, because... I mean, it was five years. Even even then, when I was still living in Manila, I was really much into sort of like the gigging scene in Manila. So, mm -hmm. what's what's it like? I mean, are there lots of live music venues, like grassroots venues that you could play? Or well, well, the uh, the the end thing is really a lot different from how it was before. The end thing is uh, you set up a show, your own show in that particular venue. And of course, you have your own audiences. You you uh, you know you print tickets for the entrance, maybe uh, inclusive of one drink or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's the going thing right now. It's not like before when you audition in a club and then they hire you. It's no longer yeah. like that. it's no longer um, like that. Well, like, I know of, uh, the only <laughs> the the only live music venue I know actually is um, Bistro Seventies, and. Is it 70s Bistro or Bistro 70s in Quezon City? 70s Bistro. 70s Bistro. And um, they, I don't know if it's still like that now, but they used to have like every night they will have yes, like live. Yes, um, 70s Bistro is very much active up to now. Yeah. But 
they they now have new events in it. It's oh. not like more exclusive for like seventies music, but now yeah. uh, Luna plays there. New wave band it is also which they got back last Friday. Luna. I think Progeny also played in seventies Mister. Yeah. Some, some other new wave bands. Well, new wave never died. I mean, especially yes. in the Philippines. I mean, new wave actually, is I, 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 actually, I can foresee like a, a total takeover by the new wave industry in these coming years. Yeah. yeah. yeah because, uh, Filipino alternative music is kind of going down at the moment. A new wave is beginning to surface again. Yeah. So but I think can I just ask you, because, um, I mean, like I said, you know, new wave never really died, I think. But when I was um, a teenager in the Philippines, I mean, I know some people probably won't, they probably disagree with me, but mm. isn't it the new wave at the time were more so like just the kids who can actually afford <laughs> so like let's just i don't want to say rich kids or anything but it's almost like it's it's a different thing but if you're if you're so like um how would you say but if you're into new wave it means that you're part of this sort of like not really elite but we have a saying in the philippines called badui if you're not if you're not listening to new wave if you're listening to the sort of like the norm, what normal radio stations play, mm -hmm. then they think you're a Badoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, like what I mentioned before, that new wave is uh, for the not so very poor. <laughs> is it still like that now in the Yes. Yeah, actually, it's more, it's, it's, uh, it's on a different level now. Like what, I, what I'm seeing is our, Previous audiences during the 80s are now the bosses of their companies, or even the owners of their companies. So they're they're big time. Most yeah. of the audiences then, maybe in the 80s they were the students, but now they're bosses of their own company or the company company they work for. So they can afford to buy tickets. They can afford to produce shows. That's what Monty mentioned during our first interview today, all about new wave. So they are now, yes, you may call it, they are now the elite. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> yeah, because, um, I mean, but, I mean, surely it would be possible to sort of, like, get it, not really down level, but sort of, like, make it accessible to others as well. Because um, there's sort of, like, a way, because, Okada, the Grand Ballroom Okada Manila, like I said, it just looks so posh. And it looks yes. like, what about the other people who are New Wave fans and who want to sort of like enjoy your music? I mean, your the music of When in Rome or H2O and Dave Jackson. Uh, what about them? I mean, <laughs> um, is it not possible to sort of like have it? in a sort of like a different sort of like venue instead of well, the thing is, I think it's, not, it's something to do with uh, certain levels in society like for the uh, um, like for the not so very poor as I mentioned yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a new way it's an in, in thing for them but for the ones that are because we, we call it here in the Philippines the masa yeah they yeah. have yeah. Yeah, they have their own thing you make, I don't want to say it, but you may call them B A D U Y, you know. <laughs> no, I don't mean, I think I'm so. <laughs> I've been a victim of that so many times because it's like you, you, you try to sort of like not say that you like mainstream music, but nowadays I can't be bothered now. I just sort of like say I like whatever music I like. I'm not bothered whether people will call me Badoi or whatever. You know, because now that we're old, I think if you're young and you're trying to be cool and you know, <laughs> I think, I, I think new wave is um, new waivers. New waivers have their own tribe. It's yeah. built in. It's built in. 
that's that's yeah, this yeah. truth yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, we, um, uh, we, before we have a very small circle, but now it's getting wider and wider. Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. I mean, just based or judging from all the new wave Facebook groups there are, you know, yeah. it's like with thousands and thousands of members. <laughs> like, yes, we were solid mean, alone, the sixty thousand members. Yeah, I mean, you would have thought because they've had like this group. Um, like Facebook groups with so many members, you would have thought that maybe most of them would have gone to sneak attack, and then it would have been so like you know like packed with people or I don't know. But I've seen some photos, and I'm sure it was a successful. I mean, the bands uh, so like you know they were there and they played really nicely, and all not just the foreign bands, but especially the local bands i just think they're absolutely amazing but would mm -hmm. you say that uh it could have sort of like benefited so sort of like more with more sort of like people um attending the shows or would you would you say that the actual number of people who went to sneak attack was just the right number of people no it's supposed to be more as far as I know, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. But well, I think, um, I'm not sure, I'm not to, to I'm not to make any comments regarding that, but uh, there should be more in terms of the new wave society in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know, I, I, am, I have a, an idea what the head count is when it comes to new wave the society. Yeah. And that, that show in Sneak Attacks, yeah, it should have been more than what it yeah. was. But it was a success. That's the only thing was, I can say. Yeah, I could. I it could, was, it yeah. was a success. I could tell that it was so good. I mean, I was so like waiting for someone to do Facebook Live so I can watch. <laughs> but I suppose it was a bit so, like difficult when everybody's so like busy and they wanted to see it themselves instead of just so like oh i'm gonna video it for other people <laughs> mm -hmm. but anyway so um apart from the band apart from camilla you've also got um like a full-time job yes correct and do you work as uh healthcare as like a healthcare consultant for a u.s company well we were employees of uh, this uh healthcare insurance in the u.s united healthcare and yes, we were we are one of the consultants. Like we handle provider inquiries. You know, like we are called provider inquiry resolution team. We have a team of consultants wherein uh, we cater provider calls, like um, argue with them why th their claims are not being paid. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. But most of the time, uh, yes, yeah. we we resolve their issue. We, we have a workaround. No, do any of your do any of your colleagues actually know that you're a legend in Philippine music? See, I think know? it was only recently when I started posting in our group chat that I have yeah. a show and I have videos of our rehearsals, stuff like that, and of course videos of previous uh, shows. Yeah. Say, oh, you did, we didn't realize that we have a rock star in the team. My, <laughs> so they were all of them were all like shocked that yeah. you're actually so sort of like the drummer yeah. of a famous like, band from the eighties and that one of my managers I think uh, three years ago uh, he, when he had, we had a meet meet uh, we had a meeting a uh, team meeting he said you know this guy it's, it's, it belongs to not something big. He belongs to something huge. <laughs> That's how he described me. <laughs> he belongs to something huge. <laughs> uh, of course, I was flattered, but uh, that's that's how it is. That's 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 the fact. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but something huge is, is what a description for me. <laughs> well, did any of your so like colleagues ask you for guest lists? <laughs> to before <laughs> the, the only uh, one day uh, i think it was before the uh, pandemic uh, we had a christmas party a company company christmas party we have this um, battle of the bats so i formed my own group 
So that's the first time they saw me. Um, and we won. We won first place. Yeah. And I, and I, I was playing guitar then because uh, you can only use beatbox. So it was like an exclusive uh, part of, at that time. So yeah. that's, that's the first time they saw me. I did, we didn't realize that we have a talented musician in the team. Right? Well, now so they know. Now. <laughs> now they know, of course. Now they it's, know. All, it's all in social media. and uh, Yeah. It's, uh, have it's you, a good have thing. you been so like ask for photos and so like signatures and stuff. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I may say I'll be expecting that once I return to office because currently I'm working from home. We're still oh, working from yeah. home. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, but because of still because of that. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. But so when the time comes that we all return to the office, then I think I'll be expecting something like that. Yeah, <laughs> they were like. <laughs> Can I have a photograph with you? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I would like a photograph with you when I go back. I don't know when I'm going to oh, go Sure, back. sure, by all means. Just uh, just ask me where and when. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will I will let you know when I go back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. and I will also like, send you a message say, oh, can we be out so I can have a photograph with you? Yeah, and... sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you've got kids living in the UK? Yes, um, from uh, my previous uh, relationships. And whereabouts are they, or it's not like are they are they also musicians or are they? Um, the my, my son, I think he works in the uh, as adjudicator in the office of the ombudsman in London. All oh, right. But so my no, daughter, no. my daughter, he she has her own ballet studio. She is a ballet instructor in London oh. as well. So it's still the arts, even though not music it's still she's still gone into sort of like the world of the arts and the ballet and so that's that's brilliant so um yeah um any of your kids how many kids have you got oh <laughs> is, it, is, that, is that a question that i shouldn't be asking you or something um, well I'd rather. <laughs> no, no, okay. Well, any of them, so yeah, like, um, followed you, your footsteps, and become a musician, or? Yes, my my eldest daughter. She's a really good singer. Oh wow! No drummer? You haven't got a drummer so like? Not yet. Uh, not yet. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so... have, I have, I have more daughters than sons. I only had two sons, and all of them are daughters. Oh well, it would be nice to like have a, a female, so like drummer as well. That will be you know, like uh... <laughs> maybe but... one of my kids now, because I have I have a full set of instruments in the house. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I have... Maybe it will give her so like the motivation, yeah. to, you know, seeing but, that but, her dad. But, but the one <laughs> I'm I'm training now. Uh, it's my wife's nephew. He's becoming a really good guitarist. That's why I bought him an electric guitar in okay, practice. All right. Oh, that's good. Um, what's the Philippine music scene like now nowadays? Uh, the so, I mean, I missed out on quite a lot of things. I mean, it's nice when friends from home send you know they send me things. But well, what's I mean, it? What's it like now? You know, we've had OPM, New Wave. Yeah, OPM. O OPM is still uh, good and active, like um, the alternative music, like Filipino rock, like in Tagalog lyrics. But of course, um, I'm more focused on the New Wave scene. Yeah. At the moment. So, yeah, we actually we play, we we play Tagalog rock. With my with, with my students here, because I have I have a group of students here with whom I'm training to play. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, is there still like a similar radio station that we used to listen to? We're still there at WXP one hundred two or MU one hundred seven in the Philippines at the moment, or? I well, think the yeah, the only, the only um, station. That I am aware of that's playing new wave. Yes, any one of seven is still hot, is still up and running. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's in a different kind of um, 
not the same as the old NU-107. It's all solid blue wave, right? But no, it's a, uh, yeah, a bit of commercial stuff. Yeah. Here. And these oh, are like uh, proper proper stations. I mean, not online stations, because I know that oh, WB... these, these are These are proper stations, yes. Oh, I see. Can you, can you hear them on FM radio? Yeah, because I remember, uh, I mean, I do like listening to the radio when I go home because in the Philippines, they just play songs that you that I've not heard for so many years that I only get to hear in the Philippines. Unless, of mm -hmm. course, I listen to so like the WXB online, the MixLR, mm -hmm. which I do every week. So every weekend when I'm at work. So um, you'd say that we kids nowadays, they don't have that kind of radio station that I, I don't believe so. It's a, they're more like uh, they listen to what they can easily access, like through radios or. Yeah, yeah. Because of now that you know, we've got the internet, they can actually, and then Spotify as well. They can easily just tap into sort of like Spotify and just listen to whatever. So. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of my friends have already uh, come across with our album in YouTube and Spotify. And they didn't realize it was me, or it was us, until they saw the credits that it was actually me who wrote all the songs. Yeah, yeah. Also, oh, your uh, questions is on Spotify now. Or... Yes, the, the entire album actually oh. is in Spotify, also in YouTube. Oh, I see. Do you even get so like royalties from it? <laughs> I mean, I know people are so like say yes. <laughs> Well, the, the proper process is, yes, I should get royalty, but uh, at the moment, of course, as long as they, 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 they play our music, I'm not so bothered about the, you know, it's going to yeah. be another thing to me to worry about, like thinking about royalties. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, ben, ben Santiago said, see you on Sunday, sir, boying. Uh, but pick Popo with the Comella band, so um, yeah, it's uh, same with me. Oh, sure. like, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I've invited my guys to attend that party. Yes, oh, it's this is it's the send off, yes, this is correct. The send -off party, isn't correct. it? It's send -off. Yeah, send -off oh my god, party. Like, <laughs> so it's always like sneak attack all over. Are you anyone playing, or is it just like uh, I think it is, it's only a party where. Oh, okay, with DJs and not bands. Uh, bands well, it's, it's going to be held in uh, House Manila, I think. It's a, there's a, it, there's instruments there in that venue, maybe. I'm not so, sure, okay. but I was uh, I just got the invite through our group chat. It's Nick like Attack. You know. Oh right. <laughs> <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Alan. Yeah, Alan Bron Ramirez said that they have the internet radio now. So yeah, I suppose so. So um, do you? Twirl as a what? drummer, do you twirl? Do you so like yes. when you, um, <laughs> when you, no, I, I, it's, um, I, I'm more into drumming, not any, <laughs> any form of exhibition. I'm not a juggler, or I'm not, a, I'm a drummer, you know. <laughs> But isn't it so much? I just find it fascinating when I go when I go to a gig, you know. So like I always watch the drummer. It's just amazing when they do it. So like twirl and then hit the drums and then twirl again, or even so like throw the stick up in the air. Yeah, yeah. So when I was younger, I used to throw the stick up in the air. Yeah. But you don't was, do that yeah. now. No, I don't do that now. I'm more <laughs> concentrated because I I need to focus. So. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do you have any drumming heroes? You add my drummer, my drumming hero. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any? My main, my main influence is uh, Ian Pace of Deep Purple. Right. You try wow. looking up. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there there are new talents right now, but uh, during my time. The, uh, the only the, the most influential drummers are like yes Ian Pace of Deep Purple and John Bonham of uh, Led Zeppelin. Oh, okay. So, yeah. What about okay. uh, Filipino drummers? Do you have any? So <laughs> Filipino drummers. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, there was one one of my contemporaries. His name is Jong. Jong Jong. He's a good drummer. That's he's the first drummer I saw. He did the drum solo of Moby Dick of Led Zeppelin. In that show, 1978, the big big show, in uh, what band was it? The, the, the original band was Split Ends, but I, I I don't know what band he's into right now. But uh -huh. yeah, he's one of them. And uh, during our time as a show band, there is a guy named Roy Mercado. It's really good. And one of our alternates. Have you, have you heard of Side A band? Side A, yeah, yeah. The original yeah. drummer, Mar Dizon, is one of the yeah, he's one of the best drummers I've ever seen during my time. Wow. Yeah, besides Roy Mercado, Mar, Mar yeah. Dizon, and of course me. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, legend. <that's it. laughs> So they are, these, these are the guys I can remember that I, I've seen extraordinary techniques. Yeah. Um, in the 90s, like early 90s, I actually tried to learn how to play the drums because I've always been fascinated. I've always loved drummers and I've always mm. been fascinated about drumming. Um, I went back because I was already living in the UAE at the time. So I went back for a holiday because I've got um, these American friends who said to me, uh, we're going to form a band. You learn how to play the drums and you can be a drummer. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to go back to the Philippines for a holiday. So I'm going to learn how to play. So I did a crash course. I don't know if you remember this uh, place called Santa Lucia Mall. Yes, Santa it, uh, Lucia? yes yeah. in, I think it's in the Marikina area going to Antipolo. Yeah, well, that place, Santa Lucia Mall, it was my brother. My, my brother is a drum, well, I think he still is, but he was a drummer at the time. They used to do so sort of like weddings and mm -hmm. fiestas and do that. But anyways, he said that there's a, a drum instructor in this Santa Lucia mall. <laughs> and up to this day, up to this day, I still don't know what his name is. But anyway, so I went for the lessons, but because I'm so into the drummer. <laughs> I didn't actually learn anything. I, I, I was. I used to be. A, I used to be a drum teacher before, and uh, I went to uh, so, like it's a convent. I have these girls learning drums. Yeah. Um, one of them, I think, she's now a big figure in U.S. politics. Have you heard of uh, Dulce Gabbard? No, no, sorry. It was the one who's supposed to run for president of the Democrats. All oh, right. Yes, and she was. She was one of my students. Oh, was it? so when did you? When when were you so like a drum instructor? What year? That was uh, sometime in the early nineties. You were in the Santa Lucia Mall, were you? No, it's a, it's, it's a convent in in near Tagaytay. In, yeah. uh, I think Dulce was only around fifteen years old at that time when I was teaching her. Right. She's a big figure, and I will not be surprised if she runs for president next election. Yeah, Alan said that she's from Hawaii, so I'll, I'll look her oh, up. Yes. Uh, yeah, Tulsi Gabbard is a Hawaii representative. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so do you think you'll still be able to sort of like, I mean, I know you've got a full time job as a healthcare consultant. But would you want to be so like a drum instructor or so like do um, like an online teaching? No, because there are there are a lot of uh, a lot of guys far more better than me. <laughs> 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 so I'd rather let them do it. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to be a trying hard instructor. <laughs> 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 Now, you have been drumming since you were seven years old. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had any drumming disasters? Like, have you ever fallen off a drumming stool or <laughs> whatever? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I am to say it because it's, it's somewhat embarrassing. Um, <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> we like embarrassing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Okay, let me. 
<laughs> in, a, in a short story. This, this, this happened in Japan. Yeah. yeah. We were playing in a club in Japan, Kyoto. That was the time, I think, the, uh, the in thing was the village people, you know, that it would. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You can stop the music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that, that was New Year's Eve, and I was not feeling very well. So I had this uh, Japanese, uh, you know, thing. Said, oh, you take this, this will make you feel better. So, so what's this like? It's more of a downer. Oh, oh. What, about, what about you? Like, uh, how many you take? Oh, for me, I take 10 at one time, the, the girl said. Oh, okay, give me four. So that's reasonably less than half, right? So she gave me four, so I took all four. As, as far as I can remember, we were we were playing YMCA, Japanese guys are dancing on the dance floor, and then uh, the the head waiter was looking at me. I was in a tower. I was playing drums, and I slowly leaned back and fell off that stairs, maybe six feet. And then when I woke up, it was New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> It was a New Year's Eve party. You know, it's like, why am I seeing? When I woke up, it's January 1. <laughs> but did you, did you have to go to the hospital or did you hurt no, yourself? No, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't have a bad fall at that time, luckily. No. <laughs> but I fell from the, from the drum seat to the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> So the moral of the story is never take any of those. So <laughs> yes, because um, if, if the girl can take ten, maybe it's reasonable <laughs> for me to take uh, four. But I didn't know that it was so strong. I ended up getting knocked out. <laughs> oh, my God. oh God! And then, did they carry on? Did your band members so, like carry on? Yes, playing? when I woke up, I was in in the apartment. Oh, happy new year! <laughs> it was New Year's Day. <laughs> right. Well, I've got a last question for you now. So, what would you, um, what would be your advice to aspiring drummers out there? Um, it depends on what kind of drummer they want to be. If they want to be professional, they should focus, focus on drumming. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, if they're students, of course, they, they also um, focus on their studies. But if they want to be a professional drummer, like what I said to Monty, it should not be half ass, it should be focused. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and both, you, yeah. I think with you, because you've been doing all sorts of um, like different kinds of music or different genres, you can also do like jazz drumming as well, can't you? Oh, yes. So Actually, I mean, me and my keyboardist, uh, yeah. or original Pamela keyboardist, we used to play jazz. Uh, we used to play, um, I think, uh, some some Chikoria at that time, and some uh, Stanley Clark at that time. Yeah. Because I've watched a film and it's uh, where uh, I found out there's actually like a big difference between so like drumming as sort of like a pop drummer or a rock drummer yes with, with jazz it, it's uh, all all drumming techniques applies yeah so you've got to know all your like yes I, I've, I've been i've been uh, in an era like uh, if you're a drummer you will not be one of the in crowds if you don't have a good drum solo Right. Yeah. Other other drummers will be watching you like that. Yeah. You, you do your solo. If you don't have that, um, no, you you're not be one of the in crowd. <laughs> one of the oh, in crowd. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then like uh, what do you call this in the Filipino? Like during the days of uh, Pasig Laban. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like doing uh, drum solos? Of course, there was this uh, uh, song, Soul Sacrifice, by Carlos Santana. That's my favorite. 
that's my national anthem. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you can look it up. You can look it up. Woodstock, 1968. The drummer of Santana played drum solo of Soul Sacrifice. Wow. Well, yeah, I will look it on YouTube and sort of like look for. It. So you did you did that for sort of like a, a gig or? A, a yeah. Oh, every night when we, when we play in the club. Every night. Yeah. I, uh, that's that's actually the second to the last song before we end the set. So you see, cool. it's all complete, all complete with percussions, like you know, and then yeah. we do the solo, like like five minutes. Everybody goes down the stage, they leave you alone there, play your thing, do your thing there. Oh wow! Well, before I actually so sort of like let you go, I forgot to mention that um, I want to say thank you to Alfie Melia uh, because um, I mean half no uh, Alfie Melia half life half death. Because um, he's done an article about Camilla Band, and I used it as sort of like a research material. Because uh, there aren't really that many sort of like article on Google. <laughs> I mean, not even the bad Google, I don't think so. But <laughs> but yeah. So um, Alfie Melia, thank you so much if you're watching. Then uh, yeah, that's that's really helpful. Because um, also the comment section on YouTube where I saw questions, uh, that that's great as well. So many, so many fans. So like saying, you know, how brilliant you are, and how you know how they miss Camilla and everything. So yeah, thank you. Um, so is there, like you said, that you're um, so like collaborating with other people? Hopefully, there'll be a gig soon. Yes, actually, and yeah, Monty told me on this afternoon that oh, we'll, we'll come up with something very soon. We'll uh, we'll hook uh, hook up with you very soon. He said. Yeah, yeah by, by all means. That's yeah, that's re that's really exciting. And what about new material? Hopefully. Well, I have two new songs. I haven't recorded yet, but as as I earlier mentioned, what I need is the one who is willing to produce yeah yeah but but we can i can do it at home or i can do it because now you know that high tech everything you know do it yeah, yeah, that's lay right. down yeah. Yeah. so yeah. i can do it but actually producing it then that that's the different story i need someone to, yeah but that's well, not the priority at the moment i the main priority is to put the band on track yeah Back that's the right yeah 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 well good luck good luck and i'm i'm really glad that uh, i want to say thank you to monty as well because um i've missed out so much on all these filipino bands <laughs> not only when i was in the philippines but especially now that you know that i'm not there anymore unless uh i actually see it on facebook or because nowadays i mean i do go to a lot of gigs and that's how I discover new bands and stuff. But because mm -hmm. I'm not helping, so mm -hmm. um, you only discover it if someone like your fellow Filipinos will post, you know, like uh, this band or whatever. I mean, even Eraserheads. I'm so ashamed to say that I only know maybe one or two songs from Eraserheads, and they were like massive. <laughs> Yeah, at one point they were huge in the music industry yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but um yeah i'm gonna rectify all that because that's why um i thought well it would be nice to sort of, like get a lot of filipino drummers because there's so many um like different sort of like music and i got quite a lot out there that unless there's a motivation or like a reason to sort of like google them or look them up mm -hmm. like uh, i wouldn't have googled camilla if you know if i wasn't sort of like interviewing you so i've learned so much about the band and yeah, i think I, I think alfie has written so as he has written a lot about camilla yeah 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 he knows yeah, he knows a lot about camilla yeah, Alan said that it's from Cryptic Rock. I think that's that's Alfie. So like that's where he releases all his sort of like articles and stuff. So 
Yeah. Um, so any other words you want to say or invite them for the send off this <laughs> on Sunday? <laughs> well, uh, that's that's more of a exclusive for uh, sneak attack performers. Oh right. It's okay. Not, yeah. Uh, it's not a. But of course. Oh. Uh, um, yes, I would like to. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted if there is a uh, yeah an upcoming gig by Camila and all these other bands that we played in Snake Attack with. And yeah, and... of course. I uh, thank you very much. It was an honor, like being the first oh. Filipino ever, especially in this very special edition of Ask the Drummer, your anniversary edition. Yeah, it's well, really, thank you. Yeah, I'm really fun. glad that you said yes. Yeah. It's flattering and it just oh. I can't get I can't get the words in my mouth for how to thank you for this opportunity. Oh, oh no, thank you so much, Boying. <laughs> I mean, yes, you know, it's so nice to actually meet a legend in the Philippine you, music Philippine mm -hmm. music scene. So um yeah, hopefully I'll get back home <laughs> soon. Maybe next oh, year yes. or yes, time. Yes. <laughs> just send me a message and then we'll arrange something. We, yeah. Uh, yeah. More yeah, than just well, an ordinary we, day. Yeah, well, do keep an eye out for um, any new info or uh, updates on Kumela. Oh, yes, yeah, Hopefully. of course, yes, by all yeah. means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, well, thank you so much, Boying. You're welcome, <laughs> thank you also. It's been, uh, yeah, it's an unbelievable opportunity to be on your show. It's a very oh, special edition. Oh, it's, it's all yeah. thanks to Alvin as well. Thank you, oh, Alvin. Oh, yes, Alvin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I told him I'll be wearing your Muted Squalls t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin, no, we, we, we have not spent that much time you know, as friends, but I see him. He is a, he's a, he's a real person. Yeah. Someone you can believe and someone you can trust. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good to know. I mean, hopefully, I'll get to see all these bands when I go home. I'll I'll make sure that I do go. Yes, <laughs> do. It's a, it, it will be an experience of a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, sure. mm. Fingers crossed. I don't know when yet, but fingers crossed. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much, Boying. So you're um, welcome, I, and I also well, want to thank you. Yeah, it's nearly so like bedtime now in, in Manila. So, well, so I, I work at night. You know, I oh, I, yeah, I, I sleep during the day because nighttime here is daytime in the US. Oh right. Mm -hmm. So and, yeah, because you know, I also worked as a um, call center agent for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hack it. I mean, I'm so. <laughs> I admire you. I salute every single call center agent out there because I just couldn't do it myself. It's so stressful and it's just such a difficult job to do. So and being um, a musician for so many years help a lot. It's a, it's a, I stay awake you're up to the wee hours of the morning. Like that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I have a hard time, you know, like making it, some adjustments to the you know, body flap and all this stuff. Yeah. Any drumming that you do with all that? <laughs> drumming your fingers? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, yes. During my break time, I, I play drums on my computer table. And then I, I listen to music, my headset. Yeah. But of course, I always like, keep an eye on the time. I don't go go over my break. Because like yeah. I believe it's like a brilliant stress reliever, being a drummer. Like you just being able to hit things and... You know, so like if you're under a lot of stress. Yes, so, uh, so it requires <laughs> it requires a lot of focus. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if if you mess up, everything everything messes up. You know, like if you lost if you lost a beat, then that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's really all down and, to the yeah, and, uh, yeah, focus and uh, a lot of discipline. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Of uh, course, your your phys your physical state. It's, I I am I am an athlete to begin with. During, even even at my forties, I was a cyclist. 
I, I do cycling for around maybe 200 kilometers every weekend. Yeah, you've got to be. Before. Yeah, you've got to be physically fit to be. Yes. Able to start, like, yeah, like yes, do I all do. that running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do a bit of martial arts, you know, MMA. Yeah. And all right well thank you thank you so oh, much oh yes of course and i thank you as well Very yeah much. And this, see you again see you soon. <laughs> all right well take care and yeah oh, yes bye yes now. thank you yeah. bye bye now yeah, bye. Right, bye, yeah. bye bye oh wow that's so amazing i mean it's like a legend isn't it and so thanks again alvin for that link up and i'm really looking forward to be interviewing lots more so like filipino drummers hopefully they all say yes to ask the drummer because they're just so fascinating so like um you know finding out more about the philippines and what it was like because it's so i i guess it's different for me and you know living in lago or something but anyways we've had different experiences and stuff and but yeah if you're in manila i know it's nearly 11 so it's time for you to go to bed unless you're boying and it's time for him to go to work but yeah thank you so much for joining us live and if you're in the uk and um, enjoy the rest of the weekend and hope to see you again next week uh do keep an eye out for um a guest announcement post next week it's going to be on a monday because I'm going to Glasgow this weekend. So I won't be back until Monday morning. So it's gonna be Monday evening for next week's show, but I will post it on the Ask the Drummer page. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, love music, love life, and always love, love, love drummers because they're just the best. They really are. And thank you for this so like a one year anniversary episode i can't, still can't believe that we're doing it for one year now it's like so so see you all next week everyone thank you bye